Hey, I've got several videos coming on handheld laser welding, and this is the first one. I'm gonna kick it off though, doing some TIG welding on stainless steel. I'll lead off with a really short video on TIG welding a stainless steel lap joint, settings, details, and all that, and then we'll segue into a demonstration that I attended on handheld laser welding. I'd like to get a lot of questions in the comments below. I've got a lot of questions myself. I'm just a little bit skeptical, so I wanna learn more. What are the capabilities? What are the limitations? So when I learned that Denali Weld was gonna be at a local gas and supply, I decided to drive over there and film some clips. All right, let's get into the TIG welding first and then we'll hit the laser demo. This is a simple lap joint, 80 thousandths, two millimeter thick, 304L stainless. I decided to use a number 10 clear cup because I think it's gonna give us a better arc shot as well as some good argon shielding. And I'll be able to use a fairly long stick out with about 25 to 30 CFH. I wanna get a puddle going within about two seconds and get moving. I'm trying to use a normal travel speed here. I'm not trying to fly, but I'm also moving out to kinda of outrun the heat because that is something that I feel like is important on stainless steel. If you hang around using a low amperage going really slow, you can build up heat and you can't outrun it. Here's some of the benefits of running a clear cup here too. Sometimes you can actually look through the cup. But I'm going along at a fairly average travel speed at 77 amps. I'm not flying along, but I'm not creeping along either. And I feel like it's a normal travel speed. I'm adding filler rod just a little bit more frequently than once a second. And I'm traveling roughly 332nd of an inch each time in between dabs of filler wire. As I get to the end, I taper amperage and back into the weld so I don't leave a crater eye and I don't melt the end away. I'm using a longer than normal stick out here just to get the, the cup out of the way of the camera. Okay, here are all the details and settings. So now let's move on to the laser welding. All right, we're gonna get into the laser demonstration here in just a second, but I wanna make a quick point first because something really hit home and, and really struck a chord with me after, after watching the demonstration. And that was, Comparing, comparing TIG welding to laser welding as far as the learning curve goes. Let's take the weld that I just made earlier in this video as an example. Let's say you had already done a little bit of welding, MIG and stick, and now you want to learn how to TIG weld. How long would it take you to get to that point? Would it be the second or third try or the fourth try? Probably not. But at this demonstration, most everybody had welded before, but nobody had picked up a handheld laser before. And in just a couple or three tries, some of the guys were laying down some really good looking welds. So that's just like kind of mind blowing to me. The learning curve for laser, for handheld laser is a lot shorter, I believe, than for TIG welding. That's what I saw anyway. Let's get into that demo. I'm at a gas and supply store where I used to get my gas and supplies. I used to live really close to here. I'm going in for a laser welding demo with Denali Weld. Big thanks to James from Denali Weld. He drove straight in from Chicago, set the machine up, and gave a great demonstration. It's not that anybody can do it. You definitely need your welding experience. A demonstration, then we'll have people if they're wanting to try it out. So I'm not just having all the fun. Just go in here and I will um, hit OK. I import it and go to my settings. This is James doing this demonstration and all the other welds after this one will be people that just attended the demo that had never picked up a laser before. Notice how tiny the weld is. That's, that's one of the benefits of laser welding is it's just such a concentrated heat, you can make a tiny weld even on aluminum. It can make a much bigger weld. This demonstration is just to show what a small weld you can make on aluminum. Now this is one of the attendees who had never picked up a laser before after just watching James make his first demonstration on aluminum. I'm pretty sure everybody that tried it on this day had welded before, but none of them had picked up a laser before. For an experienced welder, it's a short learning curve. So let's go one, import, we're all done. Switching gears now to another welder. This is 16 gauge stainless. Again, this is the first time he touched a handheld laser. This is in continuous mode, or I don't know what they call it, smooth mode or something like that. Trying to drag it all the way through, but you gotta keep that pressure at yeah, the same time. Down. <laughs> now, 
Beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> I was like, I'm just gonna whip this thing out of here, dude. <laughs> Sick, isn't it? Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, you said, hey man, do a good one. That yeah. pumpkin took out a lot of heat. It looks like. Look out! You get used to like the actual. Um, you know, the angle and the drag motion. I mean, you could probably put the wire speed up a little bit more. And you've never touched a laser before? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> so like I said, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a natural. Oh, he's nailing that sucker. Oh, that's clean. Yeah, that's clean. The last demonstration was for the cleaning function. And it gives you a diagram how to put stuff on. That's unreal, bro. I attended this demo and that led to me actually traveling to Denali headquarters in Chicago. And that led me to talking about how the company got started and then getting some more hands-on work there. So I'm, I've got a whole series of these things planned, at least two or three videos showing the capabilities on uh, stainless, on aluminum, and whatever else comes up. And I hope to be able to show some real real world applications on that some of their customers are using, because I think that's gonna be super interesting. Anyway, let's show the piece when I'm in Chicago. Hey, Jody here. I'm in Chicago at Denali Weld. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about handheld laser welding. We're seeing it all over the place. So I'm gonna go talk to some of the experts today. I'll be at Fabtech in Orlando. I hope you're going too. If you are, look me up at the Denali Weld booth. I'll post my schedule when I'll be there very soon. There'll be giveaways. We'll have a lot of fun. Right now, we're gonna go in and talk to some of the experts and learn all about laser welding. Let's go in. Now, this is Joe. I'm not going to pretend like I'm just walking in this showroom for the first time and act like, hey, yeah, right? good to see you again, buddy. Well, it is good to see you. <laughs> so initially, our first generation welders were about the size of a washing machine. So our latest and greatest generation, the Denali Weld, uh, is robot, cobot compatible. Uh, they can weld, seam clean, and remote clean. So all three functions, we call it the three-in-one. The machines come loaded. There's no options for the machines. Everything is built in the machine. This is our 2000 right here. This is kind of our Chevy 350 of the industry. This machine will do full penetration up to six millimeter down to about a half millimeter. So if somebody has a, if somebody has a customer support issue, who are they gonna call? Uh, right here, right here. We're based out of Chicago, 45 minutes from the airport. We've got all the techs are here, the parts are here, technical support, uh, whatever you need, we're here for you. We even can do, uh, a laser officer safety certificates out of this facility. So if you want to get a laser safety officer for your facility, you're welcome to come here. We can train you for that. All of our Denali machines have CE, FDA, and SGS safety certificates. We want to be the leader in all things safety. Welcome to the Denali Laser Workstation. This is James, sales engineer here with Denali Weld. We're all seeing the handheld laser demos on all kinds of social media platforms, and I'm skeptical, all right? So can you give me a little bit about your background, how you came to work here, and your first experience with the handheld laser? So I started out in custom aluminum fabrication just as a laborer. Worked to get onto a welding table. Um, from there, we did handrails uh, for Chicago, low rises and mid rises. Um, went to a couple other places, did some stainless work, structural steel work. I actually had my interview here and got to get hands-on with one of the laser welders. And like what you said, we were skeptical about all the videos until you actually have it in your hand. So this is the big guy, this is the 3000. This is our newest machine that came out. So that's full penetration up to a little over 3 eighths on a butt joint. Uh, 2000 watt over here. These are both water-cooled, that's full pen. We can push to a quarter inch. Uh, we have single wire feeder set up on that one. This one's a dual wire feeder. So this one you can have almost a full quarter inch weld.
I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I heard bike shops mentioned earlier. Can you kind of go a little bit? I'm curious on what kind of bike shops and what the application is. So they, they came to us for a demo. Uh, I ended up purchasing a machine for welding up frames. They do custom mountain bikes. They're up okay. in Minnesota. So welding all their frames, all the tube work on them, everything like that. Um, they're cranking out multiple frames now. Are they doing it by hand or they have it on a all, all by hand. Okay. They were running it by hand. Um, they can't get it out of their welder's hand again. They ended up not using their TIG machines anymore. They're running all their frames on lasers now. Material type? Predominantly aluminum up there. Okay. Very light frames they're working on just for their custom applications. Are there like three main or three or four main factors to uh, really be concerned with on, on uh, safety? You know? I mean, it's mainly optical, thermal, and making sure nobody is, we always just say downrange of the laser. Okay. On aluminum or stainless steel, you'll have more reflection off of it just because of, especially if it's polished. Mm -hmm. So anything downrange, you'll have that reflection that would come back up and out, which is why we always suggest up against a wall or in an enclosure. Enclosure is always your safest bet. Uh, there are laser safe curtains. You can build our enclosures to any size that you want. You so we're in, a, we're in an enclosure. We're, we're in one an of enclosure. Your, this is one of your products, right? This, this is one this of our products here. Kit comes in panels and you assemble it. But these are green tinted uh, filter shades, plates, whatever you call them on there. So those are safe to look through? Those are safe to look through. That's OD6 Plus laser safe glass in there. Okay. And that's the same glass that's on the inside of our helmets as well. All right, that's the same, same as? Same glass as what's there on the glasses itself. So you like always need to be wearing these, yep. is that correct? Yes, glasses or a helmet when you're welding or remote cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, if you're outside of the enclosure, it's perfectly safe to look through the green glass, but anybody inside of an enclosure should have on laser safe glasses or a helmet. Okay, and as far as skin goes, I mean, I, how does it compare to TIG as far as just getting a sunburn? And then, you know, what's the risk of nipping a finger or something like that? So I look at for your skin, the same as if you were MIG welding or TIG welding. Mm -hmm. Stay covered up. Um, you don't want to end up getting there and getting torched from your TIG welder all day long. You have the same risk with the laser as you do with MIG or TIG if you're welding with short sleeves on for a long period of time, especially at higher amperages on TIG and MIG and it's the same with higher wattages with the laser. Standard welding gloves, if you do burn yourself, it feels more like a MIG burn, very similar. Um, it's not what you would think in the movies with Star Trek where you're gonna cut your finger off with it. It's just very similar heat to a MIG welding application. So James, you say you were a welder before you came here, so doing, doing aluminum architectural and stuff like that. So how did they, did they, did Denali Weld recruit you or how did you, how did you start working here? I actually saw the job posting online looking for a welder and it just adapted to us bringing welders in on the sales side and the engineering side to better relate to the customer base. Uh, we found that when you're going into customer shops that a welder can relate much better to the other welders in there and their employers versus just a standard salesman. That's the first of several videos on handheld laser welding. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I'll try to answer them in the next few videos. I'll also put a link in the description that will go straight to one of the Denali Weld application engineers. So if you've got questions about your application, would laser be a good fit for that? That link will take you somewhere. It'll save you a little bit of time getting an answer. Okay, we'll see you next time.